So what happened during the recession that, that I learned about this credit crisis? So number one is, of course, if there was no growth, there's going to be no loans. So the next time I hear during the next recession that loans are going down, the banks aren't loaning the money, the first thing I'm going to think to myself is, well, before I go crazy, maybe that's because people aren't asking for the money in the same way. It's a recession, right? So that, that's probably the re one of the reasons why. But I'll tell you another reason why what came out of this was a new sanity from bankers. Right? That the fact that maybe the reason why loans weren't being given out the way they were back in 2003 and 2004 was because a lot of those loans probably shouldn't have been given out in 2003 and 2004. And finally, bankers are doing what they should always have done. They've come into this thing called due diligence. So now I'm seeing clients of mine that are asking for loans and they're getting loans when they actually qualify for a loan. So bankers come in, they're looking at financial statements now, what a concept. They're interviewing people, they're walking around, they're evaluating forecasts, they're talking to the management, they're actually putting covenants in loans and they're asking for support for those covenants. And a lot of my clients, that was not even happening. They would have covenants where financials had to be delivered or you know, AR aging had to be said. Nobody was even asking for that stuff during 2004, 2005. It was like a whole sort of wild west in banking. So so, you know, the credit crisis brought about sort of sanity. It brought about more due diligence among the banks. And now banks are looking to make money. So whenever I hear of banks that are offering loans at less than prime rate nowadays, it sends off the recession bells. I think to myself, well, that's what banks were doing, you know, that, that caused this credit crisis. And some banks are still doing that now. And they're doing that because they're trying to suck clients in so they can sell them other products. So they look at loans as like a loss leader to try and sell them other financial services. That's like not, the lesson that I learned from the recession is that doesn't work. The banks that stick around, the good banks that my clients like to do business with, that, that I like to do business with, they, they, they're the banks that are making money off of loans. They're looking to profit from their clients. There is nothing wrong in that. So when you have a bank that's saying, yes, we will loan you the money and it's prime plus two or prime plus one or whatever that number may be, that's because they're looking to get a return on investment from their loan. And there is nothing wrong with that at all. And those are the banks that, that you know, we should be doing business with. And I learned that from the recession, not the guys that are saying, hey, we'll give you, you know, loans for under prime and we don't even have to show us any documentation. That's not the way to be in the world of banking. I think the industry really got there. The other thing that came about because of the recession is that we all sort of have a better relationship with our bankers. We've opened the door back in. Bankers realize that they took their eye off the ball. So they're, you know, they're, they're, they're talking to their clients. They're talking to a lot of my clients now. And I got news for you. I know this sounds hard to believe. Some of those bankers are like pretty nice guys. It's kind of shocking. Not only that, but some of them, you know, they, they have the suits and they got their MBAs and they whatever, but at least for the clients that I do, at least for me, they, they have a lot to teach, you know? They, they went to school. They have some good information to put out. So, you know, now people are inviting them in and they're, they're look, say, look, here is my quarterly financials and what comments do you have? You know, well, when I compare your quarterlies to my other 150 clients, I see that this ratio is a little bit low or your, you know, your debt to equity looks a little high, whatever. That's good advice for a small business owner and bankers now are starting to get more involved. They're not just going for volume. They're going for a little bit more quality, which is good news. So, you know, was there a credit crisis? There was. But you know what? It took a crisis to restore sanity. So even though it was tough, in the end, you know, it was a good thing. Now, the next question I asked, because I, I thought this next question was, was even. Did, did most companies lose money during the recession? I mean, I think, oh, my God, it's a recession. Everybody's going to be losing money and going out of business, and we're all going to be waiting in bread lines, and, you know, I'm watching the news and the pundits, and this all sounds terrible. But here's what I learned. Uh, these are corporate profits all during the recession. And if you notice here, everybody was making money during the recession. <laughs> You know, so you know, there's there, there's a line here between financial and non-financial companies, and some of the non-financial companies had it a little bit rougher. But you can see, like you know, during the times of the recession here, profits were down, but companies were still making money. And I remember writing about this back then as well. The first quarter of 2009 was like, wow, think back about it, right? I mean, that was like when we're in the middle of this big financial crisis. Well, here was the quarterly earnings for these companies that I selected. I mean, on the, Microsoft made $3 billion.
billion dollars the first quarter of 2009. P&G made 2.6 billion dollars, going up here. J and J three and a half billion dollars. All the news was at the time was that earnings were down. Oh my God, J and J's earnings were down 30 percent, and Microsoft took their first or, you know, earnings decrease in their company's history. It's the recession. It's the recession. And I'm like, yeah, but they're still earning three billion dollars. I mean, you know, they're they're where they're managing themselves through this. And I remember distinctly, and the reason why I put that list there, and I actually don't have these numbers in front of me because I had it in the column that I wrote for Business Week at the time, is that is that every one of those companies laid people off. Like thousands of people off. Every one. They like announced these earnings, gloom and doom that they were down, and they did it while announcing like, you know, 10,000 layoffs, 5,000 layoffs during the time. And I was thinking to myself, like, boy, it must be really good to earn three and a half billion dollars and still get away with it's okay to lay off, you know, 5,000 people. It's a really good opportunity to do that. So even during a recession, Good companies make money. They continue to earn. And not only that, but during a recession, companies continue to innovate. So, you know, during the past couple of years, we've had the iPad and the iPhone obviously hit the market and completely take off. During just the past two to three years, Microsoft has introduced Windows 7, which actually works, um, Xbox, which is now you know, one of the best-selling game systems in the world, and they've also launched their cloud services. You know that a few months ago, Microsoft signed a $50 million deal with the city of New York to provide cloud-based, you know, hosted-based office applications. So the whole city of New York is going to get rid of their local versions of Microsoft Office and use everything in the cloud through Microsoft. Microsoft is spending the past couple of years developing that stuff along with a lot of other companies, but they kept innovating. Google had the Droid operating system, and of course Google Docs and Google Apps all came out the past couple of years. Disney came out with Toy... Anybody see Toy Story 3? It was like so good. Yeah, it was like the best. So they came out with Toy Story 3 and Hulu, of course, which my kids watch all the time. Ford took some, some money and retooled their Fiesta, their Explorer, and their Focus. They just had one of their best quarters ever. And even Amazon introduced the Kindle and EC2. Anyone ever hear of EC2, Elastic Cloud Computing? That's Amazon's hosted servers. So, for example, all of you guys in your firms, if you ever wanted to like get rid of your servers, your computer servers in-house, and just have Amazon hosted for you for a few thousand dollars a year, they'll do that. You can put all of your or your clients' applications on it, and then everybody can access it through the cloud. It's kind of inexpensive to do. So inexpensive that Amazon is estimating by 2014 they will be making two billion dollars a year from their EC2 services, and like nobody in this room has ever heard of them. I mean, you know, think about that. And that was all like developed during a recession. So good companies during a recession, what I learned is, you know, they don't lose money, they make money, and they innovate. It was a really good lesson to me as well. Because again, you know, what, like I turned 46 in February, so, you know, I, I, you know, I've been around, but I haven't been that around. And this was, a, like I said earlier, it was a, you know, this is like a big recession. I went into it with some pre, um, uh, pre-misconceptions, you know. And that was one of them. Like during a recession, companies lose money. They don't. Good companies make money. Question number seven. Did technology make a difference during the recession. Now look, I spent a lot of time finding these funny comics to put on here and hearing nobody laugh. She was just going to have to start faking it when the next slides come up, okay? See, she's got like the little, it's like the whiteout she's putting on the computer screen. It's supposed to, okay, well, all right, fine. Did technology make a difference during this last recession? And the answer is quite interesting. The U.S., and you know, I, I had another chart. I didn't want to, boy, you know, um, Kathy would have probably like, like shot me in the head if I put another chart into this thing. But there was a chart that just came out recently recently that showed, like in the past week, the United States is still the number one manufacturer in the world. Okay, China is number two. And China is growing and catching up and is estimated to someday even surpass the United States, maybe. But the, the United States is number one in the world. And when I mean number one, if I were to show you this chart, you got the United States here, and you got China, like, you know, kind of behind it, but, you know, catching up. And in the rest of the world, like, you know, you know France and Italy and England and all that, they're like all the way down here. Like, they're not even like in the same league, you know? So we're not only number one, but I, one thing that makes really interesting. You hear about the United States losing, you know, it, we're becoming the Rust Belt, we're losing manufacturing, we're losing manufacturing jobs around this country, um, which is absolutely true. We are losing manufacturing jobs. And here's why. Because our clients, the guys that are out there making stuff, are just getting smarter. <laughs>